Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about TV. TV in general and maybe the plans that I have for the channel in the future. I guess we could start with my fascination with TV as a child. Having issues at home when the lights go out. I used to love to read, but you can't read in the dark. I had an aunt and family members who would leave the TV on and sometimes fall asleep. I would position a mirror, a little makeup mirror that had two sides. And I'd position it in front of the TV so I could see it from my bed. And sometimes I would stay up all night, go to school. I always had a love for TV. So, looking back, shows like The Six Million Dollar Man, The Bionic Woman, Starsky and Hutch, The Original Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers, were all shows that captured my imagination. I even loved Beretta, Police Woman, The Night Stalker, which was, uh, I think it started maybe as a TV movie. It was something called Chiller Theater, and that's kind of how I got into the Universal Monsters. I guess those were our movies in themselves. Abbott and Costello, the TV show, and the movies that were on TV. My parents' well, re relatives say I had a crush on Dinah Shore. I could barely remember who that is, but you know, I'll believe them. I had a thing for westerns also. I loved all the western TV shows. I didn't care if they were black or white. I would jump around and with my imagination make believe I was Beretta or Starsky and Hutch, Battlestar Galactica, all the characters I would act out. Then there's of course the, uh, I guess it would call sitcoms or shows like that. I mean, Benny Hill, The Honeymooners. Odd Couple, uh, Sanford and Son, Bonnie Miller, The Jeffersons, I Dream of Jeannie was one of my favorites. Then we have The Munsters, The Adams Family, I love them both. I'm trying to think. WKRP in Cincinnati, I Love Lucy, of course. Carol Burnett was one of my favorites. I did I used to love that show. MASH. I'm growing up, getting older, I guess, uh, Cheers and Night Court, 18, shows like that. No, Twin Peaks was a, um, a rare event in TV. I love that. I even love the, the recent sequel, I guess, uh, uh, show they did, um, I think it was Netflix, maybe. We get into... My adulthood and the shows I think, uh, you know, you find with a different state of mind. I think I would consider my favorites are like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, X-Files, the reimagining of Battlestar Galactica, what, probably my favorite sci-fi. Things like True Blood. I'm into the superhero shows, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., one of my favorites. I like the WB shows and in general, I give them a pass. They enjoy them. They're entertaining, but they get a little mundane and the formulas become boring. The Netflix Marvel shows I love. Although season three, Daredevil, I don't want to fucking ever revisit that. <laughs> that shows like Heroes might be the best first season ever. In TV, in my opinion. And I think season two, the strike happened, and I enjoy season two, but three and four. Anyway, new shows like The Expanse, Stranger Things. So I love TV, and I love spending time with friends and watching them, talking about them afterwards. And I think that'll lead to where the channel will go in this direction if it evolves that way. So 
I let's say I make a playlist called TV Talk, and this will be in there when I get another one out, and then I might do a show like the City X Files. It might be just one podcast on why I enjoy the X Files, what I think is good, maybe some of the pros and cons. And if that evolves, it could evolve into, let's say, season one of X Files. I'll do a podcast on that. Season two, season three, and so on. And then I could see if the, if it evolves and I'm passionate and getting into it and have time, obviously, doing season episodes. Episode one, season one, episode two. But that's maybe where I see the channel going in. For this section, if it's something that uh, I find passion in and excitement for, this channel is gonna, just going to be a creative outlet for me. But I know I, what I enjoy with my friends, and this is one thing I think a couple of friends might want to join me in on. So it'll be great to have guest or co-host on and get their thoughts. And we could talk about things too, like what is the criteria for a great show? Well, I mean. I think Heroes might be the best first season, but it went four seasons and never captured that magic. So do you compare it to a 10-season X-Files show that had movies? I guess if we come to a consensus on what is the criteria, because it's so subjective and what somebody likes and ent entertains them, it's just so, you know, personable. It's... Not something you want to debate or get into an uproar over, but I think if we can agree on certain things, you know, we could have an entertainment value and a critic value or a rating. I'm not even sure if I'm going to go with a rating system. Probably be just like, oh, I really like this, or this is really good, or it sucks. I guess that's where I think I'll go with this section of the channel. So maybe I'll do, like, from my childhood, The Night Stalker, which is something The X-Files always gives credit for, credit to. Amazing show. I love almost every episode. I could see me doing a general thoughts on the show. And then going, I think it only had two seasons. Or they broke up the TV episode, movie just reminded me of a rare special event in my childhood. I'm a lover of horror, as I've explained in some other videos. And I remember watching Salem's Lot with David Soul from Starsky and Hutch on the roof in the backyard at night when we put the TV out there. It's just a special moment. One of my favorite. I guess that's a movie also. Anyway, but it's it's the TV is the catalyst for um, me finding it. So that's why I might include some Universal Monster movies of the old classics of Dracula and Frankenstein. There will be maybe recent or current things I'll do. So maybe I will... Uh, what comes to mind right now, like The Mandalorian. Maybe I'll do a trailer review. Analyze that or just get the thoughts of me and my friend talking about it. And then when it comes out, do a general review. And if there are people liking my content and uh, you know responding and maybe some feedback, maybe I could see delving into it, even if I don't even totally like or super enjoy the show. I like to give everything a chance, so I'll want to watch it for a little while. There are other shows that I could see doing that are coming up, or even continuations of shows. But it would be feel funny to go into like a season 6 of uh, Flash or whatever. Maybe I would go back and just give my general thoughts on The Flash as a show. And then go into what I thought of season one, season two. Because I'm not totally caught up. I'm a season behind. 
And I'm like that with certain shows because I get into a groove or a mood and I stay with it. Like, I love Archer, the animated show. It was a great show. But I won't consistently watch it. I binge on it. And I do that with other shows. There are shows that I know are going to be good from reading reviews and trusting friends who like the same things. Uh, one of them is, uh, I think, The Wire. Can't, people can't believe I haven't watched that yet. But I have to be in the mood. There are certain things like real life situation stuff that I tend to stay away from these days. Maybe it's a self-defense mechanism. But eventually I, they're on a list, a mental list, if anything, of things I want to watch. I think talking about where TV has gone or has come is an interesting aspect also. I remember going from 8-tracks to uh, digital tape and all the advancements. I remember when WHT and HBO first came out. What a crazy thing it was to have a little box on your TV. And now... Some some of the best content out there is being provided by places like Netflix and Amazon. And, you know, fucking Amazon pisses me off, but that's political. <laughs> anyway, talking about the general uh, where TV lies now and with the networks on TV, growing up with like four networks, having Channel 13 was great with Electric Company, and they had the Universal Monsters on there certain nights. Or Phantom of the Opera and things like that. And where does it come now? What are we watching on TV? There's epic shows. What's the debate between a 22 episode season and a 13 episode season? The pros and cons. Because I could see where these 13 episode seasons are tighter, more compelling, more comic book driven and I'm talking about the superhero genre maybe in, in this case where the 22 episodes seasons are watered down and they have mishaps maybe that's part of the criteria because looking at Buffy's 22 season episodes and X-Files they're all great to me or on a, on a level that the bad ones don't lower the value but when I want to talk about things like Supergirl, The Flash, there's some great moments, and even like The Walking Dead, I could see a lot of great things about it. But watching the first couple of the first season with a friend, a couple of friends, them dropping off, and me continuing up to a season two, three, dropping it, then deciding to go back into it, I could see the differences in my viewpoints on certain things and how I've changed so looking back at a show like Chips which I liked as a kid I tried to watch it just to get that magic and see and it was no good it doesn't hold up however something like One Adam 12 and it was a fire engine one too show I used to like those shows and I'd get into them even Dragnet although it was fucking corny sometimes but now we got things like The Sopranos, which I'm not a big fan of. And I'm not even a big fan of Game of Thrones. I watched it to get through it, basically. Although I'll admit, I think the Game of Thrones TV show is better than the books. So maybe I'm a weirdo in that way. I see, just like Walking Dead, though, I see the greatness. I see characters I love and the way they put things together. But there's also its drawbacks, and those outweigh the good for me. And maybe some podcasts will be discussing what I think might make a show great. Uh, there's a show called The Good Guys that was out a while ago. I think it only had one season or one and a half. It's a comedy. Tom Hanks' son is in it. Anyway, it's, it's one of my favorite. But I can't then say, oh, it's the best show ever, best sitcom or comedy ever. And I'm like, how's that going to hold up to another show you want to compare it to as longevity and consistency? 
I think that might be interesting conversations to have. What makes a, something super entertaining that you can let the flaws go? To me, that's like season two of Stranger Things. To me, season one is great. Season two is a letdown for me. And season three is better than getting back to that glory. But it's not enough of uh, nitpicking to lower the value of the show. But if it goes on to seven seasons and four or five of them are letdowns, then it starts to lower the value. And those could be conversations I have with friends and people who comment and participate on the channel. So I guess I could see, even when I start a movie playlist, I'll do the same thing. It'll be like movie talk. Maybe it'll be like a entertaining entertainment value rating and a critic where I could look at something critically a TV show and see it uh, like Game of Thrones and say you know good at one of the awards I'm a D&D role playing medieval uh, nerd so if it makes that genre popular and more more power to it and the genre itself so I like to I think I could be open minded judge a show critically and just be honest about how entertaining it is for me so shows like Babylon 5 come to mind Stargate was it Farscape also you know a little bit of campiness and not too serious but I could see why people liked them I could see what's good about them and maybe that's where part of this uh, playlist or TV talk the direction it'll go in so possibly general thoughts on a show then moving into general thoughts of the seasons themselves and then we're we'll looking at maybe the episodes within the seasons besides that the general discussions about shows and maybe they'll, that'll come up when individual shows are talked about and we go over something that like True Blood um, is the last season and the ending heard it and Battlestar Galactica the same thing the ending I don't personally think it affects it however I could see why people didn't enjoy the ending and I think the same concept would go for The Sopranos. That's where I think I'm going to go. It was good to do another podcast. Like I said, this is something I'm passionate about, something that excites me. And even if I don't get feedback, I think I'm going to use the channel to just funnel my passions for now. It might branch off into a bunch of little things. And I'll talk about things that come to mind. Thank you for joining me again and take care.